Hey guys, welcome to my, what is today? Thursday. <laughs> Been on the road a bit. So welcome to my live here. I'm at the bodybuilding.com headquarters. Now I'm up here for uh, photo shoots and a few meetings. So we figured that we'd throw in a live to teach you guys one of my latest, greatest new training techniques that I'm calling super drop sets. Now, the great thing about this technique is that you can fit it into any of your training programs. You're simply going to combine two muscle groups. I particularly pick uh, opposing muscle groups. So let's say biceps and triceps. We're going to superset those or chest and back. And then I often recommend with this type of system, shoulders and legs as another uh, good superset. Now the nice thing about the super drop sets is that when you're in a busy gym, it's tough to maintain two different stations. So if you're doing a chest move and a back move and require two different machines, it's almost impossible to do, particularly on Monday nights when the gym is really busy. With my super drop set technique, you don't have to worry about saving your bench or your station because as soon as you're done with that exercise, you're on to the next one. So it's really more staggered sets than supersets. However, I'm calling it super drop sets because of the way that we do it. So, what we're gonna do now is I'll walk you through a typical arm uh, workout. So, again, we've got what we're calling super drop set. So, before we move on though, what is a superset? Does everybody know and understand what a superset is? And this is doing two exercises back to back with no rest, right? So for arms, let's take dumbbell curls. I'm gonna do a set of dumbbell curls and then I'm gonna immediately put the curls down and go right over and do a triceps press down or another triceps exercise, okay? That's how we typically do supersets. We're not gonna do them that way and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, do you guys know what drop sets are? Drop sets. Drop sets are when you do an exercise, let's say it's dumbbell curls, and we're going to muscle failure. Once I hit muscle failure, I put the weight down. I, I chose the wrong weight because I'm going to go lighter. Let's say I started here with 40s. I'm going to go to muscle failure. And then when I can't get any more reps, instead of ending my set, I put that weight down. I immediately pick up a lighter weight, which is now going to allow me to perform more curls, even though my biceps were fatigued with the 40s because now I'm going lighter. So it's a way to extend the set and take it past muscle failure. Now, what's nice about both of these is that they're great for both muscle growth because of the fatigue that uh, they cause in the muscle cells. So when we, have, when we get fatigue inside a muscle cell, it creates these uh, chemical messengers that change how much hormones release, growth hormone, testosterone. It instigates things like growth factors within the muscle fibers that instigate muscle growth. However, we also know that both techniques are also amazing for fat loss. Supersets have been shown to increase calorie burn during the workout and long after the workout is over by over 30% compared to doing straight sets. We also know that the research shows that when you reduce rest periods between sets, it also increases the amount of calories you burn during the workout. Well, drop sets, are the shortest rest period that you can allow. So, again, we're burning extra calories because of the supersets combined with the drop sets. So this is a great technique for both, like I said, muscle growth and fat loss. And who doesn't want to uh, focus on both of those at the same time? So let me take you through a typical arm workout where we're doing biceps and triceps. Now, the nice thing about this technique is it works with any rep range. So, are you working in eight to 10 reps? Are you working in 12 to 15? 
four to five. You could throw this in throughout a periodized program that changes up the rep ranges as well, or you can even change the rep ranges from exercise to exercise. So, for this workout, I'm gonna demonstrate, and I'm running a little out of room here on the board, but I'm gonna start with dumbbell curls. We're gonna superset those with the triceps press down, and again, super set with my super drop set. Then, I don't know if you can read my chicken scratch here, then we're gonna move to some machine moves, so you can see how you can move from machine to machine. We're gonna do the machine curl, or preacher curl, super setted with the machine dip for triceps. Okay, so that's our workout today. Now, what I typically recommend when you're building your own workouts, using my super drop set technique is you're gonna pick anywhere, depending on your experience, from two to even five exercises per muscle group. And that's gonna vary, again, depending on the muscle group. Larger muscle groups are gonna get more sets versus smaller muscle groups. So chest and back, you probably shoot for at least three, four, maybe even five sets, depending on your experience. Whereas arms, you might only go for two or three since they're a smaller uh, smaller muscle group. So, I'm gonna walk you through two exercises as a demo today uh, for time purposes. So, I'm, I just got into the gym today, so I flew in from LA, obviously, and I'm here for photo shoots. I'm, I'm a bit sodium and water depleted, so I'm not really sure where my strength levels are today, and I also haven't trained in this gym in a bit, so excuse me if I don't get my rep ranges right, but I'm gonna go for about eight to 10 reps here uh, for this workout. So we're gonna demonstrate my super drop set technique using biceps and triceps, shooting for an eight to 10 uh, rep range. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in, and what I recommend is doing at least one warm up set. And what I would typically do here is, remember we're doing, we're gonna be doing two drop sets. So I'm gonna use 40s for my curls, gonna get eight to 10, I'm immediately gonna drop down to the 35s, and then once I hit failure in the 35s, I'm gonna do a second drop down to uh, the 30s. Now, what your goal here is on these drop sets, these are a little different than typical drop sets. With typical drop sets, you're dropping anywhere around 20 to 30% of the weight. Here, your goal is not to drop a certain percentage of the weight, your goal is to stay in that rep range. So if we're shooting for eight to 10 reps with set one, when you do your first drop set, you're gonna have to get another at least eight reps. Then when you do your second drop set with that weight, you have to get a third set of eight reps. What happens if you can't complete all eight reps on those drop sets? We're gonna add a third intensity technique that's called rest pause. With rest pause, you're simply gonna give yourself anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds of rest and then continue doing reps until you get all eight reps. Then we'll immediately move to the tricep exercise, do the same concept there, move to another bicep exercise, same thing there, and then we'll finish with that second tricep exercise. So let me get a drink and then I'm gonna hit it off. Now, like I said, I'm gonna start with just one warm up set on each of my exercises that I'm pairing up. So dumbbell curls with tricep press down. So with the warm up, I'll usually go to my lightest weight on the drop set and just do a few anywhere from five to six reps. So that's one warm up for the bicep work. Then I'm gonna immediately come over and let's do, I'll, I'll shoot for say hundreds, then I'll drop to 90s and 80s on my tricep press down. So I'm gonna start with the 80s as my warm up, and again, maybe five, six reps, just to warm up that triceps, get ready for the working sets. And I'll talk later about the technique I use on my triceps press down. All right, you guys ready to get this workout in with me, I'm warmed up and ready to go. So let's start with the 40s.
10 reps to failure there. Now I'm gonna immediately drop down to my 35s. Now here, if you feel too fatigued, you could adjust your time in between. But again, the goal really here is to go immediately to that next weight and get another eight reps. So here we go, down 35s. Failure there, and now my third drop, down to my 30s. I've got another eight to do here. I probably should have gone much lighter for this last one, but I'll show you my rest pause technique. That's five, so we've got three left, right? So I'm gonna rest now, put the weight down, 10 to 15 seconds, pick it back up. Six. Seven, let's just say, I can't do another one, I'm gonna put it back down. Got one more rep to complete at least. Eight. Nine, done. Now we're immediately gonna go over and do our tricep press downs, starting with the 100 pounds. That's 10, it's a little light. So I'm gonna go up to the 12 to 15 rep range for this set. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now my goal is 12 at least on this next drop as I went a little lighter. Again, either just adjust the weight heavier to stay in that rep range or adjust your rep ranges but the goal is to complete the same number of reps on your drops as you did in that first set. And a rest pause on this one, that's only 10. I need to get at least 12. And that's 12. And my third, second drop here, third set. I've got five left. Another rest pause. You can see how that fatigue, like I said, not only is this great for fat loss, but the intensity and the fatigue are really great for instigating muscle growth. It's eight, nine, and 12. So, our first exercise pair is done. Now, you can take as much rest as you like. 
before you get to your next pair of exercises. We got a question? We got uh, plenty of questions rolling in. Uh, this one comes from awesome Twitch. Guy. Uh, from Twitch. Uh, the question is, Are these? Uh, is this particular workout um, great if your goal is to lean out? Yeah, so this is a great uh, technique for leaning out, as I said. Due to the supersets, you're getting more calorie burn both during the exercise, the workout, and after when you're recovering. By over 30% is what, what the research has shown. And then you've got those drop sets, and then if you're even using the rest pause, all those intensity techniques are increasing the total calorie burn during, as well as because of the intensity, it increases the calorie burn after. Uh, this is coming in from Facebook. Hey Jim, does this workout help build a bigger bicep peak? So, uh, good question on the biceps uh, peak. And let me just mention that I would typically recommend resting maybe one, two or three minutes in between your exercise pairs here, particularly if you're going uh, for fat loss. But on the biceps peak, biceps peak, this is great for instigating biceps growth, overall biceps growth. Biceps peak is more about your exercise selection than the actual intensity technique or the programming. And when we come to the biceps peak, we're really focusing on, so I'll show you guys if you can see here, the long head of the biceps, which is this outer head. Now, depending on the lighting due to my tattoos, you might be able to see the edge of that long head right here where it runs into the brachialis, which is that deeper underlying muscle. Well, that long head, as you see me make a biceps, is the majority of that peak. So the bicep splits right down the middle. You have your short head here on the inside and the long head here on the outside. That long head is called the long head because it attaches higher on the shoulder joint. So when you make a biceps, when you flex, you can see I'm keeping my finger between the short and the long head. It's mostly long head right there that's making up that peak. So you wanna focus on exercises that place more focus on that long head, which is bringing the arms behind the body. Remember, the long head crosses the shoulder joint. Short head does not. So when we bring our arms behind the body, it's stretching that long head. When you stretch a muscle before you contract it, it can contract with more force, more strength. Meaning, out of those two heads, when the arm is behind the body, the biceps long head is now the stronger mover so when it's doing the curl, it's taking in the majority of the load and the majority of the focus is placed on that long head. And that's how you get a bigger peak. That's great. Um, we got, had a couple of questions coming in from YouTube about um, the rep scheme. And I think yes. you had explained it once a, a couple of times, maybe just if people who are just tuning in, what the rep scheme is for them. Yeah, so your rep scheme is up to you. So what I'll typically do, so, so anyway, this, this technique, like I said, is something that you could take yourself and sort of build your own program around. Like I said, you're gonna choose anywhere from two to five exercise pairings for, uh, for each of those uh, muscle groups. Smaller muscle groups get fewer uh, exercises and the less training experience you have, the fewer exercises. So you could pick any exercises you want. You could pair up any muscle groups, really. I prefer the opposing muscle groups because the, uh, like the biceps and triceps or chest and back because you're getting a push and a pull which can actually enhance your strength uh, on both of those moves. But like I said, you're gonna pick a couple exercises and then your rep ranges are gonna vary. So I have a full program called my Super Drop Sets coming out uh, in about two weeks. So I'll be launching that. So on my website, I'll show the whole way that I build the program with periodization where we're changing our rep schemes from week to week or in this program every two weeks. But you could do it any way you want. You could take my shortcut to size, for example, and take that and use those rep ranges each week, 12 to 15 in week one, and do your chest and back setup pairs with your super drop sets based on that 12 to 15 reps. Then the following week, when it drops down to eight to 10, you're then going to eight to 10. Just remember, as you get, as the reps get lower, the weight is gonna get heavier, but your goal is to still hit the same number of reps on those drop sets as you did on the first set, regardless of what the rep range is. Uh, this question coming in from YouTube, how often uh, would you incorporate this into your workouts in a week? Say if you were on a, I guess, a typical bro split. Um, yeah, so if you're on a typical bro split where you're really not doing much variety in your training, you're coming in doing eight to 10 reps every day, 
throw this in for, you could throw this in for a week if you wanted, just to sort of spur some muscle growth and get out of a plateau, or one to two weeks, or you could do it for four to six weeks as a full program. And like I said, if you wait for about a week or so, I'll be launching the program, and it's a six-week program. You can see how I built it in case you are kind of confused about building your own. Awesome. So, like I said, I would typically now rest this long uh, between my sets. You can even go right, as I said, from that triceps press down right into your next biceps move with no rest if your goal is fat loss, right? We want to move quickly. And if your goal is to get the hell out of the gym in as little time as possible, right? You want to get in and out. We've all got busy schedules. So this is not only great concept for fat loss and muscle growth, but when you don't have time, let's say you're planning on doing a 90 minute workout with three minute rest periods and your significant other calls you and tells you you need to make a dinner uh, at 6 p.m. when you thought you were eating dinner at 7.30. Well, now you've only got 30 minutes to train. Take that same workout, those same exercises, and just do it using the super drop set technique. You'll be in and out of the gym. You'll do the same amount of work in just less time. And when you complete more work with less time, you get better results. That's just one of the ways to change up your stress on the muscle. Remember, this technique is just numerous, one of numerous, numerous techniques. I've got ascending drop sets. You've seen uh, my shortcut to shred where we're doing cardio acceleration. Uh, we're changing up the rep ranges. We're doing drop sets, rest pause, supersets. These are just ways to take the same boring weight that we're using every day in the gym and changing up the way that that stress targets the muscle and change is good when it comes to progress, guys. So, I've done my curls, I've done my second, uh, my first uh, bicep and tricep exercise, and I'm gonna finish with the second one. We're gonna come over here and do uh, the preacher curl with the hoist. And the whole point, like I said, the nice thing about this technique is even though we're doing supersets, we're training two muscle groups back to back, I don't have to worry about keeping my triceps pressed down station while I'm over here doing curls because I'm done. I've done all my drops and I've moved on to the next exercise. So here we go. We'll see what I can get for reps here. Again, like I said, I haven't been using this equipment, so I'm not exactly sure how many reps I can get with the weight I've selected based on the different equipment as well as my conditioning for the two days of shoots I've got coming up right after the slide. What is that? Six, seven, I'm going to call that 12. I lost count, so I'll call that 13, okay? So we did 13. Maybe I'll drop, let's see, I'm dropping 10s. That might be a little too light. I'm just going to grab some fives. Do we have any fives, guys? I, let's see. I think I found them. And again, you want to make sure your weights are all set up for you so that you don't have those rest periods. Remember, you want those drop sets to generally be as quick as possible. However, like I said, if you're going through the workout, this is your third biceps exercise, and you're dying, you can give yourself a little bit of break in between the drop sets. This is number two. That's nine. Rest pause. 10. 11. One more rest pause. Buys are dead, even with the rest. So you guys get a, get a view of just how brutal this technique is. Again, I'm sodium depleted, so I'm really fatigued just from my conditioning. But 
you get the point. And one more drop set for the biceps, and then we'll finish with tricep dip. Now again, I'm here in a machine, right? So when I'm done with this, I don't have to worry about saving this when I move over to my triceps dip. I'm long done with this exercise. Oh, and my biceps are long done too. Now, one of the things, I'm doing a rest pause here, but one of the things that you may notice when I'm doing the curls and even the press downs is I'm pushing with my palms. I'm not grabbing on to the bar and doing my curls with the thumb wrapped around the bar like this. What that does is cause you to squeeze the bar and use your forearms. You wanna focus on the biceps doing the work. So what I do is I keep the handle or the bar closer to, towards my wrist keeping it at the bottom of my palm. That's why I keep that thumb underneath. When the thumb goes on top of the bar, it pushes the bar higher in the hands, and then you get more wrist involvement. You wanna minimize that wrist involvement to maximize the biceps focus, as well as when you're doing push downs. Try to push downs, don't wrap that thumb underneath, or you start pushing and using your wrist. Push with the palms. If you notice me doing the video, my thumb, my fingers were off the bar. I was pushing with my palm that moves, the, shortens the lever arm, places more focus directly on that muscle. And I think I was doing a rest pause, so I've got a couple reps left. And we're done with the curls, and we'll move over and finish with tricep press downs. Uh, sorry, tricep dip machine. Now here you've noticed, I didn't do a warm up on those second exercises because I've already blasted my biceps and triceps. So they should be warm and I should be able to select the proper weight here. So let's see what I get with this. I'm gonna stop at 12, there's a little on the light side. So I'll drop the 25s off, change it up to 10s. And right into my second drop set. Goal here is 12. Second drop on 12 and last one. Rest pause for those last two. And we're done. So like I said, I would typically probably do at least another for myself, another uh, biceps and tricep exercise to finish off my uh, arm workout. And there you have it guys. So you can pair up, like I said, biceps and triceps, chest and back, 
I also will do shoulders uh, and legs, even though they're not really opposing muscle groups. But that way you're doing two muscle groups that really don't interfere one another. Like if you're trying to do chest and triceps, it wouldn't work so well, or back and biceps, because you're fatiguing that smaller muscle group that has to assist the larger muscle group. Uh, we have quite a few questions coming in. Awesome. Um, I know that you you have different training modalities for both for beginners and for experts. Would you recommend this for beginners? Question coming in. From no, YouTube. no. So this is a very this is a very advanced technique. So if you have less training experience, I would still say you'd need a good year before you're worried about doing something like super drop sets. But if you're close to about a year training experience, what I would probably recommend is trying it with just one drop. Okay, so you're gonna come in and do your heaviest dumbbell set, right? To failure here. So I hit failure on the first one. Then just do, instead of the two, just do one drop with the biceps, then move on to triceps and the same thing. You're gonna do your first one and then do one drop, then move on to the next exercise. So that'll make it a bit less intense or if you wanna do all three and you've got only about a year or so of training experience, just do fewer exercises, maybe even just one or two per muscle group. But it's definitely a advanced technique. On YouTube, Derry says, thank you for the tip about wrist involvement. I will incorporate that. Um, and another question coming awesome. in from- Awesome, yeah, definitely, definitely guys, try the, that wrist technique. And again, it's simply moving the weight closer to the wrist. That's all it's doing. When you're holding a dumbbell, if my thumb has to hold the dumbbell, the thumb, once I do this, it pushes the dumbbell up. See that? If I move the thumb out of the way, the dumbbell can sit lower on my hand. And that involves less wrist, whether I'm doing a curl or whether I'm doing a push. And the same even on the bench press. You guys see me do the, what they call a suicide grip, where it's an open grip. Same concept here. You're keeping that weight directly over the forearm bones versus here in the hand, which means there's less wrist involvement. It makes for a stronger, what we call transfer of force from your arms to the bar. Uh, question from YouTube. If you don't have uh, that tricep machine, what can you use instead? Oh, so again, the exercises are really don't matter. Even if you had just a barbell at home, right? You could do barbell curls, lying tricep extensions, barbell overhead tricep extensions, barbell standing kickbacks, close grip, push-ups. Any exercise that targets the muscle group is acceptable. Uh, a question from Facebook. Um, the question is, what's the difference between isolation exercises and compound exercises? I think even, can you do compound exercises? Yeah, so well? you can pair up. So for example, I, I showed you guys a biceps and triceps workout, right? There's really no, other than a underhand pull up or a chin up, there's really few or no multi-joint or compound moves for the biceps, right? They're all pretty much single joint. I did curls, whether it's with a barbell, a dumbbell, whether it's on a machine. It's a single joint exercise, which we call isolation. You really can't isolate a muscle because even when we're doing the curl, it's not just using the biceps. It's also using the brachioradialis. It's using that deeper underlying brachialis. However, because it's a single joint versus a multi-joint, we're not involving the back so more of the load gets placed on the biceps. But for this technique, it doesn't matter. You can pair up a single joint with a multi-joint. Again, how you do your multi-joint, you typically like for chest, we typically start with multi-joint exercises early on while we're strongest so we can use more weight on the bench press. Then we move to our single joint exercise like flies, right, and cable crossovers, where you don't need as much weight to still stimulate uh, the muscle fibers. That's one way to do it, but you can also flip it around what we call pre-exhaust. We do the single joint early on and then the multi-joint. But that's really dependent on sort of a different style of training. Here, you're really just focusing on pairing up two opposing muscle groups. It doesn't matter if it's two multi-joint exercises or one's a single and one's a multi because you're doing two different muscle groups. This question relates back to uh, that wrist involvement you were talking about yes. earlier. Do you feel it's important to incorporate dedicated forearm training into your workout routine? Oh, definitely. So a good question I get asked on the forearm 
thing, not even related to that grip, is wrist straps for like pull downs, right? And if you've, if you've uh, tried one of these mag grips, what they really do is, what I'm really talking about, is they keep you from wrapping that thumb under. Okay, so the thumb on this goes over the top and it makes your hands like a hook, okay? That means you're not pulling and initiating that pull down with the arms, okay? Because the arms help the back. You want to focus on the back. That helps you focus on the lats. However, what people say is with wrist straps and using these sort of techniques is you lose, you lose strength in your form. You lose grip strength. So that's really not true that you're losing strength. It's just that you're not training it when you're doing back. But do you really want to focus on your grip strength when you're training back or do you want to focus on really nailing those lats? Well, if you're a bodybuilder, you want to maximize your lat development. So focus on the lats, not on the grip and use wrist straps. Then obviously add dedicated forearm and grip training to not only build up your forearms, but to also increase your grip strength. We got a couple more. Uh, what are your thoughts on full body split versus the typical bro split? Yeah, so I actually, if you go to uh, the bodybuilding.com website, I have an article on why full body training is so effective. Now, the nice thing about full body training is that you're, you're instigating metabolic processes in all the muscles. So if I come in and say I do a typical bro split, let's say I'm a bodybuilder who only trains one muscle group a day. I come in and I have a chest day. Then on Tuesday I have a back day. Wednesday might be a leg day. Thursday might be shoulder day. So I'm coming in and training one muscle group. Now when I leave the gym, that muscle has to recover. And recovery is a calorie consuming process, right? So the more muscles that are recovering, the more calories you're going to be burning to recover. So we see that with full body training, because it instigates more recovery and more muscle fibers, you're burning more calories. It's also instigating gene activation and metabolic genes in all those muscle fibers, which is keeping you a fat, keeping your, your fat burning process turned on. So full body training is definitely superior to a split when it comes to fat loss. For muscle growth and strength gains, it's, it's a little more confusing. There is data showing that full body training, or at least training muscle groups more frequently, which is what full body training allows you to do. It allows you to train, say, chest or legs four, five, even six times a week versus once a week, like the typical bro split where he's training just one muscle group once a week. So you're activating those metabolic genes and keeping those metabolic processes turned on better and more frequently with that full body training. So it's definitely ideal for, for fat loss. Muscle growth, we see some uh, positive changes with frequency of training. So squatting, say, six days a week versus one would likely produce greater gains in strength over one. They've tested this in trained powerlifters, not just, you know, the typical study where you take some college-age males who fart around the weight room. This is with trained powerlifters, showing that when they increase their squat frequency from three times a week to six times a week, their strength increases were doubled than the one. So it may actually enhance strength gains as well as muscle growth. But right now we know that full body training is definitely superior for fat loss. Now, if you check out my full split training uh, technique at gymspine.com, and I'm actually here to do a video on that. It combines the benefits of both full body training with the split, where you're coming in and doing a typical split. Maybe you come in and do chest and triceps. So you do four exercises for chest, maybe three for triceps, and then all the other muscle groups that you didn't train that day, shoulders, back, legs, you do one exercise, two to three sets, and that is your full body component, obviously at a much lesser intensity, but that's there to stimulate those metabolic genes. What are your thoughts on working out on an empty stomach, say if you're intermittent fasting? Sure, so that's a great question that I get all the time. Many of you know I'm a firm believer in intermittent fasting for fat loss, okay? Don't believe that intermittent fasting is going to instigate muscle growth. It can, however, 
it's gonna be hard to maximize muscle growth while you're intermittent fasting. It's really ideal for fat loss. And that's why I like to mix up my intermittent fasting with what I call intermittent eating, where you're eating all day, but through broken up periods to get uh, maximum, maximize that muscle protein synthesis. Now, when it comes to training on an empty stomach, people will tell you that if you train on an empty stomach, and then eat right after the workout's over, muscle protein synthesis goes through the roof compared to when you eat before you train and eat after you train, which is what I recommend, eating before and after. Now, that is true. If you fast before you train, when you eat after that workout, muscle, muscle protein synthesis skyrockets. However, there's a reason for that. It's because of the fasting. The fasting caused massive breakdown, muscle breakdown, before and through the workout. So now all that protein synthesis has to just make up back to baseline before it can even shoot up above baseline and cause muscle growth. So even though fasting and then eating after your workout causes a much more uh, robust, or we say a bigger magnitude in the, in the protein synthesis spike, overall it doesn't lead to greater muscle growth because you had such great breakdown. So definitely, what I recommend, one of my rules for intermittent fasting, guys, is to make sure you're eating around your training window. We have something that's called sports nutrition. It's a field of science, okay? Not eating before you train is sports anti-nutrition. We know nutrients, certain ones, protein, carbs, fat, as well as certain ingredients like creatine, beta alanine, citrulline malate, actually enhance performance when you're training. So avoiding things that can enhance your training, in my opinion, is idiotic. So make sure that you're eating before you train or at least during your train and immediately after. That way your performance is at the top as well as your recovery. If you're training fasted and then not recovering right after because you're still fasted, you're, you're, it's a detriment to not only your performance in the gym but your recovery after. Uh, last question, yes. where can people find you on socials? Well, you guys can get me just at Jim Stepani on uh, Instagram, uh, as well as Twitter. And I believe it's Dr. Jim Stepani on uh, Facebook. But if you Google me, guys, you'll find me either under Jim Stepani or J-Y-M. All right. Last, that's it for questions. So I want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Awesome questions. I really appreciate answering questions it's it's sort of my way of uh of getting you guys the 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 answers to the real questions that you have i try to assume what questions you're going to have whenever i come out with a new program or new concept but i love getting your feedback because the questions that you guys have usually so many other people have them but they're just afraid to ask so i want to thank you guys for the questions thank you for tuning in and remember you can find more great content from me and other experts at bodybuilding.com. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, stay gym army strong. See you guys. I'm Dr. Jim Stepani, and today I'm gonna to give you the four reasons why you should be intermittent fasting. Now, intermittent fasting refers to periods where you fast followed by periods of feeding. Now, the typical intermittent fasting diet that I follow is called a 16 to eight, where you're basically fasting for 16 hours out of the day and eating for only eight hours. We already do this in our normal day with our sleep pattern. Most people typically fast about 12 hours and eat about 12 hours. By simply extending that window a few more hours where you're fasting for a full 16 and only eating for eight hours a day, you get many benefits that go far beyond normal diet patterns. To learn how to intermittent fast, make sure you check out my article on intermittent fasting at bodybuilding.com.